everyone, Alexandra here. So today we're going to talk about a common challenge you have, and that is creating interactive content. And specifically, we're going to look over how you can use Flowpaper to turn a PDF file into an interactive piece of content. Now for this tutorial, we're looking over how you can use their Canva plugin to turn a magazine into an interactive piece of content. So you will need one, a PDF file of your magazine. You can create it in Canva, edit it as you need it, and then you can head over to flowpaper.com slash plugins and get their Canva plugin from here. You will get this pop-up and you can use it with one of your existing designs. And from here, just double check everything's correct and you can save your magazine into Flowpaper. Additionally, after you've installed this plugin, you can always go to share and you will find under more, you will find the plugin right here under more options. So you can always just find it again if you need it. Click on Flowpaper. Select the pages you want to save. In this case, I'm just going to save the entire magazine. Save it. Now, once this loads, you can click on View in Flowpaper, and this will open up the browser version of Flowpaper so you can edit everything in here, or you have the desktop version, and all you have to do is import your PDF in here. Now, the very first thing you need to choose is a template. So essentially, this is the background of your file. So imagine taking your magazine and putting it on a desk or on just a certain type of service. So in this case, I'm just going to opt for this office style. And essentially, you get your editor straight away. From here, you can just, you know, look through the pages, skim through them as you would through a regular magazine. And very importantly, you also have these options at the bottom to test what your magazine will look like on different devices. This is very important because it allows you to see if the magazine is easy to read on different devices. Now, Flowpaper is very easy to use. Essentially, you have your initial design editing options right here. So you can see that design is selected. So some interesting things you can edit here include the intro animation, where you can also change the template with just selected, the font. Then you have your navigation options. So this toolbar at the top right here, for instance, you can customize it to match your branding change the arrow sizing just so it's you know it just pops up in front of people and makes it just easier to read you have some other options here as well for example you can remove the navigation panels so specifically these arrows but this will make it a bit more you know not as intuitive to use so i definitely recommend just sticking with the best practices that are set by default in flow paper then you have the behavior section this, in my opinion, is the most important thing because you can optimize exactly how each page moves, if that makes sense. So for example, this right here is a soft 3D type of animation, whereas you can opt for a flat soft animation, which just moves the pages, you know, just in a different way, but it depends on how you want people to interact with your content. Then you also have shadows, branding options. I definitely recommend adding your branding. And you can get as detailed as you want to with this from controls, again, where you can select which elements you want to show. But beyond this, what's going to make your magazine interactive is under edit. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so we can get a better perspective at this page. And let's just go to the second page or wherever you have maybe some images or maybe you want to add a link on top of some text or an image. We can move the editor navigation a bit so that you can get, you know, a clear view of everything you have going on on your magazine. And on the right side, you will have the interactive elements that you can add. Most importantly, you have the link area. So here you can add a link. Just head over to YouTube, copy a link, and then you can add it under navigate to URL. You can decide if you want to show a link icon. I do recommend doing this. 
just so people can see exactly where you've placed your links. This is great, for example, if you have products to sell or if you really want to redirect people to a certain type of content. Now that you've added the link, you can select exactly where you want uh, the link to go. So for example, if we select this area over the image, we've now added the link to the YouTube video on top of the image. And at the end, I'm going to show you what this looks like. Some other options are a hotspot link. So a hotspot is, again, similar to a video. So let's just say we're going to link to the same video. And I want the hotspot to be maybe on this element here, the ring. So you have the ring and then you can go and add, for example, another URL to, let's say, a different product, such as this blazer over here. So if you go now, click on the link, you have the editing options right here. So for example, you can have under hover text, you can write something like blazer and write its price or something like that. So people will be able to hover over this, get the text so that they know, you know, what all of these hotspots are about. So this is great if you have, for example, a catalog or if you just want to turn your magazine images into shoppable elements. Some other options you have include embedding an image, adding a hotspot image. So for example, you can just select an image, in this case of a complete outfit you suggest with that specific blazer. I'm going to add it on top of the blazer. And again, when people hover over it, they're going to see the image. Other options you have include a video, specifically audio, if you need to maybe talk about something. Or for example, in this case, we have a interview. You can have an audio version of it so that people who prefer listening to the article have that option instead of you know just having to read everything. Same for video. You also have the option to embed a URL, add a whole gallery. So again, if you want to, you know, maybe for a different page, add an entire gallery of, I don't know, clothes, outfits, photos that maybe a photographer took. You don't necessarily always have to redirect people towards an external source, towards another website. Instead, you can keep them on this magazine with interactive content like this. And then basically to publish all this, you're going to go to publish and you have two options. You can host it online on the cloud or through a custom domain if you want a bit more, you know, branding customization options. For this tutorial, we're just hosting it on the cloud. Click on start upload. And then very importantly, you have a bunch of options here. You have your URL where you can just, you know, copy this and share it. You can share it, for instance, in an email campaign or just send it directly to people or gate it behind, uh, ask people for typically their email or ask them to submit, uh, you know, their feedback on a product of yours or just ask them to kind of, you know, give you something in return for this freebie, if you will. You also have the option to embed it on your website. So this is great because, you know, you can take an otherwise boring PDF file and use Flowpaper to embed it on your website so that you'll have that interactive piece of content on a product page, on a blog post. This just makes for one, it increases the time people will spend on your website, increasing your chances of also ranking higher. Plus, you're just spending more time with your readers or shoppers. And you also have the option to create a promotional video from the PDF file you already have. This is super easy because you can just speed up things a bit. But I'm just going to show you if you copy this or you click on view online, Add this into your browser and you will get access to the magazine we just created. And you can see here the background, the navigation options we added, and all of the other elements. So let's just go over the page where we added all of those interactive elements. You have here the image. If people will click on it, because this is the exact way 
a reader will see your interactive magazine. So when people click on the image here, they will be redirected to the video on YouTube. Just note, you do need a paid account. Unfortunately, this feature does not work with a trial account or a free account because you can actually try Flow Paper for free, just as a side note. And here, again, we can zoom in a bit. You have these other interactive elements I added, specifically the link with the blazer caption, if you will, on it. And also this hotspot image. People will just click on it and they can see, you know, a suggestion for pairing that outfit with different clothes or how to wear it or you can add a recipe or tips for anything. You just have a lot of these options for using flow paper to create interactive content. Now if you do want to change anything on this to maybe get more views to a product page or uh, more people to listen to an audio file, you can go back to the editor, click on continue working, you know, head over. Honestly, you can even add interactive elements to the front cover right here. Go to edit, select, you know, maybe you want um, a video, you know, right here at the top. Click on add video, draw an area where you want to add this video. It's literally going to add an extra element to your cover or to another page in this magazine. And uh, just click on publish again. You'll need to make sure it's saved all over again. Re-upload the entire file essentially. And you've now got your interactive magazine with all of these new interactive elements that you just added. Of course, you don't need to go overboard with these elements, you know, just add them where they're necessary. So again, if you want people to purchase a product, redirect them to your product page. If you want people to really listen to a video or a podcast, an audio file, anything like that, again, add it in there. I do recommend keeping maybe a maximum of one to two interactive elements per page. So with, for example, with our products right here, this might be too much. Instead, just stick with promoting maybe this pair of pants here, a ring here, or just the blazer, you know, just to kind of keep things uh, not as cluttered. So this is it really. I'm going to leave a link to Flow Paper in the description below. If you have any other questions, just feel free to leave a comment or reach out to their support team to help you with, you know, expanding upon these uh, options. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, like this video, and I will see you in the next video.